Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered Sports Edition. My name's Joe. Last time out, we looked at the game Ultra Quick Wrestling from Downey Games and looked at it through a lens that kind of somewhat reflected uh, or contrasted it rather with like play games face to the mat, which I had done previously. Now I'm going to do something similar with another Downey game today, which is called Player of the Game Golf. And we're going to take a look at that and somewhat compare it uh, to uh, um, History Maker Golf from Play Games. Sorry, I was drawing a blank there for a second. So the idea here is that, um, you know, I'm trying to give you a kind of a, a, a contrast, I guess, between the two games, you know, a comparison. So that, um, you know, if you think that the, you know, one or the other works better for you, then maybe that that's that's better. A um, couple of quick things that I can say that are definitely different between the two is the Downey game uses a course card, one card for the entire course. While, of course, the History Maker Golf game gives you course cards where each of the 18 holes has its own card. And you basically, um, you have qualities for your golfers and the course holes have specific things on them that challenge certain skills or qualities. And um, so I would say History Maker Golf is much more in-depth in its hole-by-hole -hole game, of course, because like I said, Downey does not have hole-by-hole. -hole. It's the whole course. So the Downey game plays faster. The Downey game is also designed to do all the rounds of the tournament, while History Maker Golf for tournament play does kind of a quick play, quick generate results kind of thing for the first few rounds to get down to your cut, and then ultimately you end up playing the final round out hole by hole. So different approaches. Both of them are probably somewhat similar in time to complete a tournament, um, depending on how quick you are and so on and so forth. Uh, the ratings, of course, are different. The, uh, the History Maker Golf, of course, uses qualities, which we're all used to from play games. That's kind of a staple of their systems that they use. Um, most of their games apply that kind of thing in one way or another. Um, second season football is probably the biggest outlier in that regard, just in the way that the, the teams are rated. Um, and I haven't looked at that game for the channel yet, but we will get to that at some point. The challenge there is just how long it takes to play a game out. But with the express version, you have some options to speed up things, but I'm digressing. So let me get back on topic. Um, in the Downey game, you uh, don't have quali qualities, you have grades, basically. Um, so you'll get a grade for putting, you'll get a grade for fairways, you'll get a, putt uh, a, a grade for par 3, par 4, par 5. And then the course cards will have their own ratings for things like uh, skill and scoring. And so you'll check those based, th there's charts for the different um, grades for the course and then you compare your golfer's grade to the course grade and there's a grid and you basically you roll two dice you get a result we'll see all that momentarily i just kind of wanted to give you a brief introduction on that so we're going to take a look today at player of the game golf from downey games and we are going to use the all-time great golfer set i have the 1983 season and the all-time great season so um i don't have any extra sets for uh, History Maker Golf, aside from what came with the game. I haven't decided yet what I want to buy. I'm leaning towards the 70s because the 70s is an era of interest for me. You know, I was a kid then. Um, I have this thing in my head where I want to do like a universe of all sports in the 1970s and use utilizing various games for that. Um, Originally, I was thinking computer games, but I might try to do something board game. It's the time that's involved. That's the big sticking point, the biggest hurdle to, to clear to make this happen. So for now, we're going to concentrate on looking at player of the game golf. And we will be using, as I said, the all-time great set, which comes with, um, I think, 80-plus golfers. I haven't counted. But all the big names that you would expect are in the set, and we'll see them in a moment. But what we're going to first going to do is we'll look at the layout for the course cards and the golfer cards. So you'll see what that it, that looks like, and then we'll just get into some play, and I'll go through um, maybe a round or two. Not probably not an entire tournament because it would take 
a decent amount of time. Just as it would with play games. It's, you know, like I said, the time the time is probably roughly similar, roughly similar. Um, depending on your level of familiarity with the uh, with the various games. So let's take a look at the uh, the cards and then we'll get into some gameplay. Here we have a card for Luke Donald, his 2011 PGA Tour card, as you can see right there. So you have your modifiers for each round. So uh, basically you'll apply this to the course cards uh, rating for each round to generate a base score, but it's going to be modified because you're going to roll for each guy for each round. So you're going to roll results round by round on the course card, and then you'll use the items on this card to, to arrive at a score for the round for this golfer. So you can see here we've got uh, basically plus minus, mostly minus, obviously these are pros. Um, so you'll have a, a round one and two score, then you'll have a round three score and a final round score. If you're doing a, a tournament with five rounds, you would actually use this as one, two, three, and then four, and then round five is the final round. Then you of course have a drive rating, a fairway rating, a par three, four, and five are down here. And then our putting rating, and the card number is just the number of the, the golfer in the set. It doesn't have any effect on gameplay. So that's basically what the golfer card looks like. Now let's take a look at a course card and see what that looks like. And here we have an example of a course card. So as I mentioned in the player card segment, you've got scores for the, go for the course for each of the four rounds. And again, if you were doing a five round, you would basically just make one. You would double up on round two for round three, and then use round four and final round five. But you can see round one base score is par, basically, and then we have a plus one, a par, and a plus one, right, for this particular downy open card. Then you have various types of results, and this is, this is the core of the gameplay. So for every golfer, you're going to roll 2d6, and you're going to use them in the 11 to 66 mechanism, right? So you'll have a 10 column and a 1 column. You roll two dice, say red and white. Red is the 10, white is the, right, white is the, the singles. So you'll have an 11 through 66 result, and in there you have various possible things. So here you can see in this first box up here on the 11, you have BD in a purple box. That is big day, bad day, in which case you roll again on this chart down here. Now you also have um, this red minus SD, and then under here you have in 14, you can see you have a minus one. So the red results are good, good results for the golfer, basically. It's kind of backwards from what you might think because it's, I guess, from the course perspective, perhaps. But red means good for the golfer. Green means bad for the golfer, basically, or good for the course, bad for the course. I don't know. That was the design decision. I may have flipped it, but it, it, as long as you know what it is, it works. So when you get this SD, that means you roll one die and you make that. So you have a minus one through minus six possibility there with that. Obviously, these have specific numbers, minus 1 on a 14, minus 4 on a 21, and then so on and so forth. And you would take that number, add it to the golfer's rating for a round. So using our previous um, example, he was a minus 2 in round 1. So you would take, if he rolled a 21, you would take the minus 2 and the minus 4, which is minus 6. Take the, go the course base score of 72, and he rolls a 66. For the, or scores a 66 for the first round, which is a minus six, of course, and that's a, a good result. If it was in round two and it was a minus two with a minus four, it would still be minus six, but his score would be a 67 because the course is tougher in the second round, right? So all the courses in the game are rated in this manner, and all the golfers are rated in the manner we saw in the previous card. So other things you might get, uh, the green, as I mentioned, is a, is a bad score for the golfer, so you'll have a plus SD, you roll a die, if you roll a 5, you get a plus 5 for the round. Which again gets modified by the golfer's uh, rating for the round and the course rating for the round. So you get the idea, it's very straightforward. When you roll this question mark, that means you roll again and you use the skill column, and then these will take into effect either the course rating well, the combination of the course rating, perhaps, and the golfer rating for specific things. So you have drive, putt, fairway, TRB is trouble, 
then you have par 3, 4, and 5, etc. right? So you're always going to be looking at another chart. And I'm not going to show the charts. We'll see them some, some in the gameplay coming up later. But um, there's charts for all of these. And you just roll against, well, like I said, I'll show you the charts here in a little bit. Um, there are scoring charts and skill charts. I'll just put it that way. Um, and so you have a skill rating that we saw on the previous card. So it could be A, B, C, D, etc. Um, high or better. So A is better than a B, right? It makes sense. Here you can see the course itself also has ratings for skill and score. And then, of course, the par rating. So that, that doesn't really have any impact because you're always going to use the base score up here. So we know that for round two, this particular course is, is fairly tough. It's going to, the average for a round two score for this course, or this event on this course, I guess, is how it really works, is a 73. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, zeros are just par. You, wrote, you, you, you shot par for, the, for that particular round. So basically, it's one or two, typically, rolls per golfer per round. So if you have 100 golfers, you might make 150-ish or whatever rolls for a round. So as I mentioned, it, it works differently than History Maker Golf, but it does make sense, and it is quick play. And you're not worrying about individual holes. So the thing that History Maker Golf has that's a benefit as compared to this game is the hole-by-hole -hole element. The downside, of course, is that to get all the courses... You have to buy them from play, which can run into a lot of money because they have 20 golf course collections with uh, a few a few courses per collection. So there's you know tons of courses available, but to get them all is somewhat pricey. Whereas when you buy a season from Downey, you get all the courses for that year, as well as all the golfers that they've rated for that year. So you get, you know, a hundred and something golfers and uh, 30, 40 courses, depending. I guess it's somewhere in that area, about 30 maybe. Um, looking at the 83 season, I was looking at that earlier, and it's about 30 courses, I think. So a good number of courses and a good number of golfers. And the set costs like uh, $11 or something. Um, because, but the downside then again there is you have to download it and print it. And I don't think that any of the stuff for History Maker Golf can be bought as a PDF. Some of the play games you can buy PDFs and print them yourself. I think History Maker Golf, everything comes from play games already printed, which, it, which is a nice benefit as well because you get everything it's all laid out professionally printed and you just basically break them apart and you've got your set. So pros and cons for both, but now we're going to look at some gameplay for this game just as we looked at gameplay for the wrestling game last time out. All right, so with our all-time set, I took 10 golfers. And if I can pick up the cards here. So you can see them on the score sheet, I guess, if you can read that. Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, Sam Snead, Arnold Palmer, Ben Hogan, Bobby Jones, Tom Watson, Gary Player, Gene Sarazen, and Phil Mickelson. So 10 golfers. I'm not going to do a full tournament with, you know, the 90 golfers that are in this set. We're going to play the Downey Games Open. So this is a fictional course. And we're just going to play it so that you can see how, how we play, right? So round one here at this particular event. The score is a 71, so that's your base score. The course's skill rating is B, so it's not overly difficult. And the score rating is A. Okay, now you have, here's Tiger Woods, and here are all his ratings and so on, and we'll see how they play in as we go through the tournament. So let's roll for his uh, score for the first round. So we're going to roll two, si two dice, two D6. We'll use black for the first digit and white for the second digit. And we get a 31, and we look on here, 31 is question mark. So we roll again. And this time we get a 32, and a 32 in the second column under skill is par 5. So for par 5, Tiger's rating is an A+. Now you look at the score rating here on the course is A, and his rating is A+. 
So here on this chart, we have scoring A because of the course is an A. And then you look in the A plus column and we're going to roll again. And we got a 23 and a 23 is zero. So he basically rolls par for this, this round. So we write in 71. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We got to deduct two for his, his uh, round one or two scoring. So he actually scores a 69. So Tiger is two under par for the, let me write, uh, that's actually three. Let me write minus three in there as well. All right, and then we just move on. So we move to our next golfer, which is Jack Nicholas. And we do the same thing. We roll, we get a 15. A 15 again is a question mark. So we go to the skill column. We get a 24. A 24 is fairway. He's an A. The skill rating for the course is B. So we look at skills B, column A, and we roll again. And it's a 12. And the, low, the lower numbers are worse. So you want to roll high. So a 12 under column A is a four. So we do four and then we take a minus one, which is three. And we add three to that, which makes a 74, which is a plus two. And that's how we do this. Then we go to our next guy who is Sam Sneed. 32, 32 is a plus two. So you take his, his minus two, plus two is a zero. And then you look at the round score, which is a 71. So he gets a 71 and he's a minus one. And that's just how this is. That's how easy and quick it is. So now we do Arnold Palmer, same thing. And we got a 56. Now 56 is a minus two. So he gets a minus two and a minus two is a minus four. So with the 71, that gives him a 67. So he's five under right through the first round. Next up is Ben Hogan. He's a minus one in rounds one and two. He gets a 23, which is again a question mark. So we roll again. 14, trouble. Okay, so his trouble rating is a B. And again, you look at the skill for the course, which is B. So it's B and B. And we roll, and we get a 35, and a 35 B is a minus 1. So a minus 1 and a minus 1 is minus 2. With, with that is a 69, and that's a minus 3 for that round. Now we go to Bobby Jones. He's also a minus 1. correctly 61 so a 61 is a minus one makes him a minus two with the 71 is a 69 he's also three under par so so far the only one who's had a bad uh, round has been jack nicholas as we go to tom watson and we get a 64 which is a minus one with his minus one also gives him a 69 with the 71 so he's also three under par. So basically you're just adding all the modifiers up based on what you roll. Now Gary Player. And he gets a 56, which is a minus two, with another minus two is a minus four. So he rolls a 67. And that makes him tied for the lead so far. Gene Sarazin. Gives us a 13, which is plus single die. So we roll one die, and it's a five. So he gets a five plus a minus two is a plus three. So he rolls a 70, scores a 74, which is a plus two. So not, not a good round for Sarazin. He and Nicholas are bringing up the, the rear of the pack here. Now we'll go to Phil Mickelson, who is our final man. He gets a 65, which is question mark. So we roll it again. 46 in the second column is par four. So we look at his par four rating, which is a C. And the score rating on the course is an A. 
So we roll, we get a 41. So scoring A, column C, 41 is zero. So he gets a zero with a minus two from 71, leaves him with a 69, and he is three under par. So there you have it, that's round one. Now we go to round two, and we'll start over and just do them in order like we've been doing. So we'll start with Tiger Woods. He gets a 52 this time, which is a plus one. So plus one minus two is a minus one. The round two scores a 72, so he gets a 71, which is one under par and leaves him at four under through two rounds. Now we look at Jack Nicholas trying to recover from a poor first round. 36, 36 is question mark. Whoops, that white one didn't go through correctly. 64 is putt. His putting score is an A, so this is the scoring. So it's AA, and he rolls low again, so that's unfortunate. So a 12 is plus four. So he gets a plus three, which is a 75 in this case, and he's now five over. So Jack Nicholas is just not, not doing well. Sam Sneed gets an 11. So we get the BD result, which is big day, bad day. Now in the normal game, the skills that are listed here on the course card are not in effect. Okay, in a normal game, these don't take effect. You won't have this purple, these purple boxes here. You just roll a die and it tells you. So in this case, we're going to roll a die and then we're going to use the skill or score from his card. So we're just going to roll one die. It's a two, so that's par three. So we're looking at his par three score, which is A, and the course score is A. Now we roll and we get a 64, which is going to be good. Scoring A. Uh, 64 is a minus 3. So a minus 3 with his minus 2 makes minus 5. He scores a 67. And that puts him at minus 6 so far on the tournament. So Sam Snead is doing well. Much better luck than Jack Nicholas. Now Arnold Palmer, who's one of the co-leaders after round 1, rolls a 23, which is a question mark. So we're going to get a skill or score check here. 64 is putt. He's an A putter, and the score is A. The tower's falling apart. 51, so A and A, 51 is minus 1. Minus 1 and minus 2 is minus 3. From 72 leaves 69. That is 3 under, so he's now 8 under par. And we go to Ben Hogan. Hogan rolls a 53. 53 is question mark, so we're going to have another skill check. And I keep bouncing in the die here. 54. 54 is fairway. His fairway is A+. Plus, and the skill is a B. So A plus B. Six, uh, 26. 26 A plus is a minus 1. So he gets a 70. Uh, minus 1. Minus 1 is minus 2. So that's a 70. And that makes him minus five. So he's minus five. We go to Bobby Jones. He has a 23. A 23 is, again, a question mark. 56 is par three. His par three rating is an A. Scoring is A. So AA, 36. 36 AA is zero. So zero and minus one is a minus one. So he gets a 71, which puts him at minus four. There we go to Tom Watson. 24, which is a minus one with his minus one. It means a minus two. He gets a 70 for the round. And he's minus five for the tournament. Gary Player. Twenty-one minus four. Wow, minus four plus minus two is minus six. From seventy-two is a sixty-six. That's the best score we've seen so far. That is six. Uh, he is eleven under par. Gary Player is killing it right now. Killing it. Gene Sarazen up next. 
He had a plus two in round one, so he's looking to recover. He also gets a 24, uh, which we just saw a few minutes ago, I think, which is a minus one where the minus two is minus three, so he scores a 69, leaving him at minus one. And last but not least, Phil Mickelson, who shot minus three in the first round, gets a 66. So he's got a big day, bad day roll. So let's see what we get. A three, which is par four. His par four rating is C. And again, it's A. And he rolls a 52. And a 52 scoring A column C is minus one. Minus one, and so he gets the same score, basically. He gets a 69, and he's now minus six. Now we go to round three, and we will use the second column here on the card, so this column, for the scoring. So it's a minus, same for Tiger as it's been, but... Um, so he gets a 26, which is zero. So he shoots even that way, but he gets a minus two. So that for this round, it's again a 71. So he gets a 69, which puts him at minus seven. Still very much in the hunt here, depending on what Gary Player does, because he's been killing it. So Nicholas still trying to roll something nice here. Gets a 56 and a 56 again. He Oh, what's well, a minus two? With his minus two there is a minus four, which gives him a 67. That's five under par, leaving him even. So he's finally uh, off the snide there. Sam Sneed gets a 14, which is a minus one. With his minus one for round two, gives him a seven, uh, 69. So that's minus three. He's at minus nine. Next up is Arnold Palmer, who's at minus eight through two. It's a 36, which is the question mark. A 12, uh, 21 rather, is par five. His par five ratings in A, so we're in the A, A and A column for scoring 42. A column 42 is zero. He's a minus one, so he gets a 70, leaving him 10 under par. And now we go to Hogan. 63 is a question mark. 26 is par three, so that is uh, a B for him. And a 46. So B, scoring A, column B, 46, is a minus 1. With minus 2 on the round, is a minus 3. From 71 is a 68. That is 4 under, leaving him 9 under. So as you would expect, all of these guys are pretty good. Only uh, Nicholas has had bad luck. Bobby Jones, 45. 45 is question mark. 25 is trouble, so his trouble rating is an A, so it's A and B, 56. So skills B, 56, column A is a minus 3. Minus 3 and minus 2 is minus 5 from 71 leaves a 66. And that is 6 under, he's 10 under through 3 rounds. Tom Watson. Gets a 51, which is a minus 3, with his minus 2 is minus 5 from that, and he's also a 66, so that's 6 under, he's 11 under. Our leader through 2 was Gary Player. Let's see what he's got for us. 46, 0, and that's a minus 1, from that is 70, that's only 2 under, but he does maintain the lead so far, he's at minus 13. Sarazin, who is at minus one through two, gets a 56, which is minus two, and minus one is minus three, giving him a 68 for this round. Four under leaves him at minus five. And Phil Mickelson to wrap up round three. Gives us a 25, which is a question mark. So we check that. 
we get a 36, which is trouble. His trouble rating's a B. So skills B, row B, 54. Row B, 54, is a minus 2, with his round score of that is a minus 3. From 71, we have 68. That's 4 under. He is 10 under par. So our leader remains Gary Player. And in second is Tom Watson. Tied for third, we have Palmer, Jones, and Mickelson. So Tiger to start off the fourth and final round gets a 43. That is a zero. He is a minus three for that. 70. So he was left with a 70, which is two under. His final is minus nine. So unless everyone else has a bad round, he's not going to win. Nicholas at even, but he has a minus three in the last round, gets a 41, which is a minus one. With that is minus four. From that is 69. He's going to finish at minus three for this tournament. Not a good showing. He really, he really stunk it up on the first two rounds and probably would not have made the cut if this was a regular tournament instead of just kind of a play example. Uh, Sam Sneed gets a 65, which is a question mark. And a 22 is drive. His drive rating is a C. So C on skill B with a 12 is going to be a bad score. So B, 12 is 4. So that's a plus 4 with a minus 2 is a plus 2. So he shoots a 75, leaving him at minus 6 for the tournament. Arnold Palmer. He's at minus 10, minus 2 in the last round, 61 with a minus 1, minus 3, so that's a 70, making him minus 12, minus 12. So he's the leader at the, well, no, he's not, he's not, but he's in second. Hogan, Hogan is minus 9 through 3, 31 is a question mark. Roll again, 31 again, is a par 4. His par 4 rating is a B. So column B on scoring A with a 34. Column B, 34, scoring A is a 0. And his final round is a 1. So he shot par this round, 72, leaving him at minus 9. Bobby Jones, who had a minus 10. Gets a 54, which is a minus 1 with a final round of minus 2. Makes minus 3 from 73. Leaves him with 70. That's minus 2. He has a minus 12 for the game, for the tournament, rather. Watson. 43. 43. 0. Minus, uh, he has a minus 1 for the final round. So he shot a par of 72. Finishing minus 11. Next up, we're coming down to the nitty-gritty. Here's our leader, Gary Player. If he shoots par, he'll still he'll maintain the lead. 53 is question mark, so this could be bad, depending. 31, par 4. His par 4 rating's a B, so it's column B on scoring A. 35, so this should be okay. 35B is a 0. He's a minus one final round, so he shoots par, like I said. So he maintains the lead, and the other two guys have to do really, really well, or player is going to win this tournament. Gene Sarazen at minus five through three. 34 is a question mark, so we're going to have another skill score check here. 26 is par three. His par three rating's an A. Scoring is A, so column A on table A, 45, A, 45 is a minus 1. His final round rating is minus 1, meaning, making it minus 2 from 73 is 71. He finishes at minus 6. Mickelson at minus 10. If he can shoot a minus 3 or three, minus 3 would tie, minus 4 would win. Can Mickelson pull off the upset? 41 is a minus 1, and his final round's a 0, so that's going to leave him at par and at minus 10. And our winner is Gary Player. So there you have it. 
Now that's only four golfers, but you can see it didn't take me all that long to play it out. Um, you, you can use as many or as few golfers as you want. This particular set, the all-time great men, has 90 golfers, so you could play all 90. And you'd resolve, you know, however many, and then you make the cut after round two. So you'd have 90, 90, then you cut, and then you would finish rounds three and four to actually wrap up the tournament. But that's how easy it is. You have your skills and scoring charts. There are playoff hole charts. You can also do match play as well. There are rules for that too. Um, so you can do pretty much everything you can do with history maker golf with this game. Obviously not as in depth, not as much story to it. Um, you know, if you had the, the card sets that matched up kind of, then you could probably use them in, in tandem to do quick seasons or something if you wish to, where you played out maybe the majors with History Maker Golf and got that full narrative and maybe did all the other minor tournaments with, uh, with Downey, uh, player of the game golf, whatever, you know, whatever works for you. Um, you know, the, the game is, is quick play. It's fun. I enjoy it. It may not be everybody's cup of tea because it's not hole by hole. Um, so I think there's room in my particular gaming closet or shelves for both games and I will play both games, but I did want to show this as a, you know, as a somewhat of a comparison to history maker golf, which is, you know, in my opinion, an outstanding game. So that will do it for now. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. If you are already a subscriber, thank you very much. Um, as always, I appreciate, you know, you guys taking the time to watch. Hope you'll come back and check out something else down the road. But that will do it for now. My name's Joe. This is the sports edition of Hexed Encountered. And until next time, as always, happy gaming.